Well, this match marks the halfway mark of the Vitality Hockey Women's World Cup. Match 18 of 36, the final match in Pool C. Argentina, the world number three, taking on South Africa, the world ranked number 14 side. Argentina with a 6-2 victory over Spain and a 3-2 loss to Germany. South Africa lost to Germany 3-1 and Spain 7-1. These two don't meet very often. They last met at the Hockey World League semi-final in Johannesburg a year ago. Argentina won that meeting 3-1. It's their third World Cup meeting. They drew in 2006 2 all. They met four years ago in The Hague. Argentina winning it by four games to one. Spoke to Delfina Marino, the Argentinian captain, this morning. And she said, well, the World Cup is the World Cup. You can take nothing for granted. We've seen too many upsets in this one. The teams are out in the middle of the park. Time for the national anthems of both countries. So South Africa, bottom of Pool C, coming into this final group game. Argentina currently second, sitting in second spot. Let's have a look at the lineups. And it's Suchi in goal, a back three of Donati, Habib, and Barrio Nuevo. And midfield quartet of Fernandez, Habib, Sanchez, and Vonda Heider. And a front three of Caballero, Marino, and Granato. On the bench, Ortiz, number 26, one of the joint score, top scorers in the competition with three so far. So she'll be playing her role shortly. And Bande starts in goal for South Africa. She's impressed in the first two games. Botes, Dietlis and Hunter, the back three. 
the midfield of four of Gals, Peyton, Jones and Bobs. And front three of Marley, Main and Glazeby. The likes of Chamberlain and Duplessis on the bench. Terre Blanche arrived without a stick. She got the concussion in the first game against Germany. Disappointment for the South African captain not to take more part in this competition. Belen Suchi always wears her heart on her sleeve. Not unknown to see her cry during the Argentinian national anthem. She is hugely experienced, debuted back in 2006, won uh, gold at the World Cup in 2010. She missed the Olympics here back in 2012 to have a child. But for Malela and Bande, who made her debut back in 2013 against uh, Chile, doing articles with PwC in South Africa to be a chartered accountant, had time off to uh, compete here. The countdown is underway. The final Pool C match, Argentina against South Africa. And it is Las Leones of Argentina get, get this game underway in the famous blue and white stripes attacking the goal to our left hand side south africa all green gold socks alongside me in the commentary box simon mason and simon south africa with it all to do a tough ask for them thanks charlie a tough ask indeed and it's going to be crucial whether that south african midfield of peyton house jones and bobs can combat argentina deny them early opportunity through Someone like a Florenzi Habib to find her forwards at Marino and Renato. Right across from Marino, and Bande has to make a sharp save, and sniping at the far post is Sanchez, who can't get a stick on the ball. And Bande, heart in mouth time for her in the first minute. Well, and you would feel that she is going to be busy this afternoon and for me it's, it's, it's her mobility up to the rotations of the forwards and the chances they will create she was good standing up in the first game as a vertical barrier when she went to ground i feel that just compromises her ability to make saves slightly there's hunter Goodness. firing it forward Going to be kept in play? No, not quite. Just a quick glimpse of Augustine uh, Carradi. I'm going to be coach since. Uh, no, that's a poor ball picked up by Shelley Jones. Two on pass for this one, Alison Keogh of Ireland and Emmy Yamada of uh, Japan. Yamada doing it at the end at South Africa, defending Marino, stolen possession. She's got Granato up with her, but that's a good covering back by House. Here is uh, uh, Wanda Haider, Marino. A shot at goal, or? It's a long corner, it's taken a deflection. Great pace from Simone House as she came back to defend that Marina, not getting away from her as she accelerated. On the header, Beef. And on the back they come. 16 is Florencia, her Beef, who is the younger of the two. Another one, number 14. Florencia, her Beef. Too. Maria Nuevo, Maria Nuevo first time, touched by Marino, and Bande with the save. And put in the goal by uh, Argentina, but ruled out, push. Cavalera, I think it was in the end, it's a great ball in, super attempt to touch on the near post. Well, I think that's a little bit harsh. Marino, who's put it in. Don't tackle from Sanchez. Beatless, Back to that left-hand side, on by Howes. Here goes Granato, around the outside of Howes. Granato still going, runs into Emi Yamada. 
good pace and extension on that run as the forward carries it tries to get it so far out in front of them to allow them to get the leg speed up to just eliminate with pure pace Valencia Habib through Von der Heide. Oh, this chart from Von der Heide, so just invites South Africa out Habib There's the aerial route looking for Baron away though. And, uh, Kinta, Kinta, uh, Jones Pinlay, like, sorry for closing the gap. Through the legs from Sanchez, picked up from Marino. She's through the legs too. Sanchez along the goal line. And a stick tackle from Carly Botas. And she's uh, she's, she's going to go straight upstairs. She's already signalling for video umpire. But it looked harsh in real time. It's a lovely little pop ball, wasn't it, to the baseline as Sanchez came in. Yes, I can hear you. That's right. ball first, absolutely. Even on that replay, it looked like ball okay, first. So let's have a look. So to me, that's absolutely ball. It was in the first replay we saw before it even went upstairs. Botas stepping in, extends and jabs, missing. Then that's all ball before the stick contact. For me, the umpire's blown that on noise rather than real awareness of what it was. That's completely ball to me. Should be a long corner. That's what I'd be calling, but that's ball first. You can see the stick, the, the angles, the sticks and the stick faces. Let's listen to him. Amy, yeah. I have a decision for you. The ball was played cleanly and it will restart with a long corner for Argentina and South Africa keeps the okay. Ball called Simon. It is uh, a long corner. Great tackle. From Deepless. And she, she knew it as soon as she was in there. It was a good extended reach under control. And the shoelistic contact came after the ball contact. Habib, Sanchez. Sanchez off Hunter. Takes it quickly. It's a Granato. Renato still going, wins the free hit on the edge of the circle. Renato with such pace as she cut across two heavy challenges before she kicked it. Hard in from Gomez, long corner. Deep. Fonda Hayda. Carry in the way, though. The Argentinian fans in very fine voice around us as Deepness comes across again to deflect it behind for a long corner. South Africa under the pump at the start of this one. Avif. Gomez. To Agustina Habif. Rolled into Marino. Marino twisting and turning play on. Habif towards. Uh, Honda Haider, now into Ortiz. Ortiz not happy, feeling that the ball was deliberately played over the baseline, and we've seen a number of penalty corners being given for that over the course of this tournament. Marino, beautiful skill from Marino, still going, Delfina Marino. That is fantastic ball control. Lovely little spin from Botez. And here is May. This was the movement, the foot movement, and then trying to dance, jump feet out of the way, that body movement to pull it back in. And then as she goes back across her body, she tries to jump over and play it behind herself to create space. So creative. Three hits for Argentina. A real pace about this game at the moment. Gomez. And the header. And forward. And uh, just left to run. There's Tinchinetti. And Kunas. Well, Walraven in the early exchange. She has to be careful because the Argentinian forwards are happy to stay really high even when South Africa come out, forcing the defenders to back mark a step away and then popping back into space. Walgren's not really quick enough for that. 
Albertario tracking back as uh, Jones goes on a little run. That was off the leg of Albertario. Hunter. Who is uh, this? Irvin. Three hit to oh, three hit to Ortiz and Argentina. Albertario beaten to it and uh, desperate defending from uh, Hunter. Free hit to Argentina. Offering to this left-hand side is Sanchez. But they come out to Gomez. Gomez once more. Up off the stick of Peyton. Inception from Peyton Gomez was just trying to open her hands and slide that in left to right. Saw the reverse run in the circle. There was an open space up on that right hand side. Alonso out to the right. She'll get it back. Alonso. Alonso playing it in towards the circle and in towards Alvatario. And it's a 16. The circle from Dietlis. How many times do you think we'll say that in this game? And South Africa try and work it out of the back. Credit to them, though. They are trying to work it out of the back. They're not just thumping it forward. Uh, Alvatario uh, wins possession back. And Kunis and Alvatario moving troublesome for the South African defence. Well, the answer to your question, Charlie, is I think a lot because Argentina is definitely going to have lion's share of possession. A beef into Alvataria, and the Amada apologises as Alvataria has possession just inside the circle. A beef will take. Offering on this left-hand side is Barry Nuevo. This is Gomez. Gomez into the circle. Off the stick of uh, Manuel into the South African defender. It was outside the circle, but was the body inside? That's the question. Let's have a look. Well, that's the, a huge question. I'm going to referral about where the lift was Ayana? from. Well, the lift was outside. Yes, uh, I'll take I the I thought the lift yes. was outside. Can you if the lift is outside, the then it's always given where the point of lift outside. is. It's like a cross coming in across the circle. It's the point of lift that's blown. Oh, it's comfortably outside. In fact, was the, was the hit outside was the hit on the edge of the circle. The edge is just inside, but the, it's outside the touch. Emmy, yeah. I have a decision for you. The ball play was outside of the circle. Yeah. So you start with a free hit for Argentina and South Africa keeps their referral. Uh, yeah, another good is, referral uh, free hit. from Argentina. Argentina. Argentina free hit because yeah. there was a foul. Yep but it was outside of the circle, okay. so they do keep their referral. Okay. Free hit by Free hit outside, very clear outside. from outside. Yeah. video yeah. umpire. Two from two. Sorry, I need... Sorry. So South Africa within five minutes of keeping this goal list. Okay. The beef. Yeah, to bring it in. Yeah. Gomez gets it back again. Alonso, the beef, just a missed touch from Fernandez. And so that you have the three hit. Argentina with 65% possession, five circle entries, but no shots. Ortiz gives away the three hits. Botez. Beatless. Pressure coming from Trincinetti, but turning away and out of it is Peyton. Good work from Peyton. Now by Habif. And it's uh, Sheldon Rostron. Hunter. Can't keep it in play. I think South Africa will be fairly pleased with the way things have gone in terms of they haven't 
conceded any shots. They haven't had much possession, but they are playing the world number three. Yeah, they haven't sunk back too deeply. In earlier games, we've criticised it. Oh, that falls nicely to Marino. One on one with Mbande. Oh, Marino, how many? Not, how much time does she want? About three weeks is the answer to that. That just took so long. She could have shot that away twice. It's a great lead from behind the defender, an accurate, aggressive lead. The overlap for Marino. Well, they're on the front foot against uh, Argentina. Delfina Marino. It was almost she was looking for other choices, Charlie. We see it again. Eyes are up, she's looked, she's looked, heads down, she's still going, she hasn't hit it. She's tried to slap it and taken so long with a big wind-up. Cavallero just told to calm down the... Uh, challenging, challenges even, sorry, Jones. Heading in towards the circle and a free hit, which is a poor one. And Argentina will be disappointed, I think, that it's, it's sloppy from them certainly feels that way they haven't got the interaction between the players they've not really had the eliminations high up the pitch South Africa have sat back but not not so deep to allow them easy possession yeah Argentina should have done better over the course of this quarter you feel dropped out deep lifts Peyton Peyton once again up against uh, Ortiz, and Ortiz gets the better of that coming together. Well, Peyton showing the double movement that's necessary to eliminate at this level as she took the ball left to right, tried to drive around the back, Ortiz span, she cut back in field and then tried to go back into the space. Absolutely right technically. But Ortiz doing really well to get a left hand down on the turf and get a full stick block. Gomez up to Alonso into her beef. Alonso into that right hand side. Augustina her beef gets her head up, plays it forward, gets the ball back from Caviero. Looking for Marina cut out by Botez. It is a South African ball. Final 90 seconds then of the opening quarter, and a disappointing quarter for uh, Corradini and his team. Just the one shot. And plenty of possession, but haven't really done that much with it. Free hit Argentina. Ball play for Granata. Can she inject some spice and some pace into this uh, quarter? Deeklift certainly giving no quarter because she stepped forward aggressively, shoulder to shoulder, denied the space. Here is Granata, goes Ariel, still going. Granata, here is Marino. Marino just runs away from that. Gomez offers. Marino wants to try and do it herself, and South Africa get it clear. And, uh, Marino. Who's picked up a card? Marino. Marino, she? Yeah. Marino picks up a green card. Oh, Dirk Chamberlain protected it really well as she came forwards. Marino just whacked the back of her stick as she was running. Second green card of the tournament for Delfina Marino. Picked one up in the second game against Germany. There so it is. Carry forward there, blocked up really nicely. Clever running forwards from Dirk Chamberlain. Ortiz playing it up the line, asking quite a lot, too much, in fact. Of Ronda Hader. Brought down comfortably by Gomez. As we tick through the final seconds, job done for South Africa. They've kept Argentina, the two times winner of this competition, to a goalless goal first quarter. Marino with the best chance of the opening. 15 minutes but seemed to want an age before getting the shot away in fact she didn't get the shot away and i think sheldon rostron will be very happy with the way his charges have played in the first 15. argentina nil south africa nil at the end of the first quarter well there's not too many highlights for uh, argentina in that uh, first 15. a lot of defensive work by 
South Africa. Let's have a look at this uh, best chance again. Well, it's the long through ball. This contest on the edge of the circle from a high forward is the overlap from Marina that creates the opportunity. But she ju it's just indecisive. For me, that's the first opportunity that she too should have taken one foot forward there and then hit it. She's already closed her angles down to Mbande anyway. That's when she had a little look, but now should have unleashed. Duplessis not really in that contest. Woravan getting back to get the touch, but just not direct enough. Plenty of work to do for Argentina. Now the question is, can they get a bit more possession further up the park? A lot of it in their own territory. Yeah, well, 41% possession they've had according to stats we have up here, but most of it, as you say, Charlie, a majority is back deep in their own defensive zones. Can they afford to defend one player light to leave them with some outlet passes? OK, let's get down onto the park and join Krista. And I'm here with Sheldon. Good execution for your first quarter. Tell us what the tactic is and how you're going to keep that going. Yeah, I think it's just about making sure that we start them up ball. Uh, trying to make sure that obviously we're a bit better in defence than we were before. Um, and then now just trying to make sure we can establish a platform higher in the field and hopefully try and see if we can push for a goal. And get them frustrated. We've seen Delphi off already. That's a good sign for you guys. Yeah, I think that's uh, a little bit what we're looking for. So we know that it's working out for us. Just got to keep leveraging it. Thank you, Sheldon. Ronda Hader with an aerial at the start, which was poor. I think she should give up on those aerials. They haven't really worked for her in this uh, match so far. And it's not the percentage pass, is it? Not when teams are set, Joe. You, you're throwing the ball into contest. It's always going to come back against you. Unless you've got a real opportunity, your forwards are leading away to create space to drop it into. When you're a team in the ascendancy, I just don't think the overheads are particularly wide. Well, we saw Germany struggle with their... They didn't execute their game plan as well as they had done in their first two matches. Maybe because they thought they were playing a side lower ranked than them in the competition. And perhaps Argentina guilty of that here against the lowest ranked team in this pool. Well, certainly physically looking at the faces of the players, it doesn't appear there's, there's the exertions we saw in the first week. OK, it's cooler, a definitely better temperature for playing at a higher tempo. But they have to force that tempo because South Africa certainly won't do that for them. Nice pass by Donati out to uh, Wanda Haider. Marino jogging back on top of screen. Donati. Habib. Now some space down this right hand side. Wanda Haider winds up and Bande puts it behind, taking no chances. Long corner. Beautifully well executed strike. And a little bit of lift to it as she went through that, drives through it off the back foot. Stolen by Marino and Granato. Motors with giving the free head away penalty corner up off the stick of Peyton. Did that move five off the top? It was pretty close. Pretty close, really difficult, Habib, if she drives in. There's no doubt about the penalty corner decision at that moment in time. Really difficult when these players run onto the ball that has a little bit of forward momentum. Is it five? Is it four? So tight. Difficult for the umpires in real time to see it. Two minutes in. First penalty call of the match. Argentina converted two of nine in their previous two matches. And Uevo is on the part number 27. Also standing there, number six, Bianca Donati. Donati to the right. On uh, Baron Nuevo to the left, goes to Barrio Nuevo, the slip, Habib into the body of Mbande, and then fired straight back into uh, an Argentinian injector. Uh, Mbande doing brilliantly, it's a long drag, the extra rotation, and Mbande doesn't go to ground, stands up. Habib doesn't have that high option, anticipating the ball, and the goalkeeper going low. Marino taking up position on the right-hand side. It goes to Brian Nueva once more. Very flick. Marino doesn't get hold of it. It's bouncing up. Hits Granato's foot. They're playing on here. It's a huge foot in the middle of the circle. The umpire down beneath our commentary box blowing it. Good support play. Alison Keogh clearly showing the decision. Onto the foot of Marley, but an 
An original infringement earlier on. Jones takes the free hit for South Africa. Otos. Let's have another look, Simon. Well, full credit to Ambambande. It's a low left hand save to start where she goes out. Then she manages to get up and get in, in the way of the second as it's a bit of a drilled into the turf. Bottom edge from Marino. Good left hand. Sanchez. In the corner from Granato. And that's come up into the face of uh, Orovan. She's uh, cut herself. Let's have another look. Yeah, it's come up on Marino's stick. Nothing intentional, but just going to have that looked at. Really in the war, South Africa, aren't they? They yeah, are, but they, they have to show this physicality. If they back away from tackles and give easy spaces, Argentina will overrun them. That's a lovely pass to find space cross field. Just showing too much of the ball is uh, Fernandez. They're now limiting themselves to which side they can go by forcing all their players into the middle and left-hand side. They needed some width across the back three. They'd gone to a back two with absolutely no transfer opportunity. Well, Jones is trying to give that by dropping out. He wins the free hit, taken quickly. Bob's left in her way. Good work from Botes. He's had an excellent tournament for South Africa. Really worked hard, Carly Botes. Here is uh, Peyton from De Heide, Alvatario. Got support with Ortiz behind her, but Argentina almost guilty of doing what Germany did, which is run with the ball a lot. Alvatario on the reverse stick, fires it across. First time shot from Granato. Not on target. Electric pace down the right-hand side to get it across in the first instance. Granato reaching through and sweeping the ball towards Mande's goal. Hunter, Hunter Jones. And Marino edges it off the sideline. Dietlis picked up Sanchez. Sanchez drops it out to Barrio Nuevo. Donati. Oh, trying to find Ortiz with uh, Gomez. But, uh, just uh, comes up short. A full credit to South Africa. They're stepping forward out of defence to intercept in midfield. They're doing it really well a lot of the time. Just denying Argentina easy ball in the middle areas of the field. Daisby. Being taken to the first aid. Quickly taken from Jones. Jones still going. Jones wins the long corner. Well, for all of their intent through midfield and stepping up, that's their first circle entry for South Africa the whole game so far. Well, they're, 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 they're playing the game further up the pitch than they were in the first quarter, South Africa. What a take that is. Absolutely brilliant out on that left-hand side. Now, here's Trincinetti. Ball forward. Looking for Yankunas. Yankunas coming round the wrong side to make the challenge on Dietlis. gone the way of Argentina but I'm sure the South African player was in front Chamberlain is waiting for the ball and Chamberlain on her own at the point of that press happy to step into the opponent's half just do a little bit of leadership running 
Can't deny Argentina an easy transfer, splitting the fullbacks. Ortiz lays it forward. Picked up by Yankunas on the reverse, Dick and Bandit makes a good save, it's still there for Trincinetti. Trincinetti wins a long corner. Donati. Into the circle it comes, the touch and Bande clears and uh, Jones will complete it, will she? She's given possession away. Swung back in. Trincinetti wins the penalty corner. And Saka, perhaps a bit guilty of being a little overcomplicated in their circle. <laughs> Absolutely, sometimes you just need to simplify it as best you can. Trying to get rid of it, missing the ball in the first instance, having to go back into second phase, a little bit of stick block, but Hunter getting caught up. This was the rotation and the reverse, really well cracked at Mbande's goal, doing well to step across and deflect off the baseline. So... 27, Noel Baranuevo, 29, Julia Gomez. A little shift to the right and a little change. And Baranuevo looking for the deflection. I think he's absolutely nailed uh, Von der Heide there. Chance for South Africa on the counter-attack and they've got uh, uh, Manuel very high up in the circle. Here is Manuel! Ooh, not far away, Belenzucci feels comfortable enough to let that go. Damon's cracked it across on the reverse to look for Manuel. And just opening up a little bit here, perhaps as Argentina attack. Trincinetti, uh, Albertario, sorry, in the corner of Hunter. Iron away though to Alonso. Alonso gets it back. Alonso's just played herself into some trouble there. Absolutely. Dirk Chamberlain doing really well as she did lateral transfers and then stepped out to split the fullbacks. And then Manuel stepping out to make the intercept. But they are so deep now, South Africa back on their own 25. But this is where Argentina have got to play. Similarly to how the Dutch played, playing the ball into space rather than compacting everybody into the 23. Well, they've got to play smart, and it's probably going to be a three or four phase play, side to side between fullbacks and halfbacks, move the South Africans, compress them into a, a middle channel, and then use the width that opens up. Argentina pressing high, looking for the mistrap to turn possession over. On the header, and the tango sticks. And five minutes of the first half going. It's still Argentina nil, South Africa nil. Really dogged performance from South Africa, who are growing into this game and growing with possession further up the park. Von der Heide plays it forward off the foot of Peyton, so we'll come back for that. Well, Charlie, it's obviously show you were talking about the relative experience and match play of Argentina. Been away for what, a month, I think you said, in terms of their preparation for this. South Africa limited matches. Marino, beautiful skill, still going Delphi. Marino, and she's put it over the bar. But that's what she can do, the FIH Player of the Year for 2017. Uh, it's a pick and a touch in field, just keeps it off her toes. And Bandino stays big, fair play to the keeper, jumps at it with the right shoulder. But Marino's blasted that over the top. As you said, we were talking about the fact that South Africans haven't had much match play, but now in this tournament, a couple of games in, they're slowly starting to get a little bit more confidence. The touch is coming, the movement is becoming smoother. Habib. Dropping it out to Gomez, out to that far side. Gomez. Habif. Gomez. Barrio in away, though. Well, that's asking too much of her skipper. Yes, it is. Well, the 
draw actually doesn't change anything. In fact, Argentina can still lose and come second in the pool. But it's about the performance and carrying that forward into the uh, crossover because it's not going to be easy crossover. New Zealand, Japan, Belgium, possibly Australia. Oh, wait. Paul D coming to a conclusion in the afternoon session here on the penultimate day of pool action. This Vitality Hockey Women's World Cup. And credit to the Argentinian fans, they're still trying to make a noise and encourage their team, but Botez has given possession back over. Caballero can't bring it under control, and it's uh, gone too wide for her now. She tries to get it back into the circle. Here come Argentina. Caballero battling. And then Fernandez will pick it up. Fernandez with a bit of time. South Africa claiming for an Argentinian foot. I'm not surprised. Dinkifs was dancing on the spot to get her own feet out the way of it. Managed to jump and intercept. Pick contact on the ball at the same time and felt she'd won. Gomez. Advances sort of four metres and then makes the pass. It doesn't need to advance. Granato just runs away from her. Peyton. Making tracks is Glazeby. Oh, he's trying to. Fired at the park, and there is Glazeby. A oh, great committed running from Glazeby in the first instance. She would have expected that in the first phase attack, but carried on anyway. And then the strong, hard hit ball up the sideline, which was a little hopeful, but get so close to her in the end. 90 seconds of the first half remaining. An opportunity here for Bobs. Bobs running forward, and the pass just behind Manuel. Oh, dearie me. They're not going to get too many opportunities, you feel, South Africa. They've got to make those passes count. That said, who's to say they aren't going to get more? Marino, she won't want her side to be the victim of yet another upset at this uh, World Cup. Alonso. Wolverham back with that smile on her face and something to show for her efforts. Oh, it's fantastic. You get to half time. If it gets to half time at nil nil, you've you've taken the world number three to half time without conceding in a game where most people would have suggested a number of goals would have gone against you. So, some serious swelling. Oh, that's uh, she's okay. Mum and dad can uh, relax if they're watching at home, or indeed if they're here. Final 20 seconds. Is this a chance here for South Africa off the back foot? Suchi makes the save. And South Africa have the long corner. Whoa, whoa. Charles Suchi, it's a goal! South Africa have the lead! Would you believe it? Jade Main has made it Argentina nil. South Africa won with two seconds remaining in the first half and Argentina well wow, they are going to be stung into life you would feel as the ball is played in we see so many reverse sticks lifted badly when they're smashed into the circle this one is executed perfectly goalkeeper Suchi doesn't get it out aggressively enough the touch in just in front pops it into the turf Suchi surfboarding on her knees poor body shape overall but what a touch underneath by Maine to get that goal for South Africa. Well, there is the half-time hooter. What a finish. And South Africa, who have been under the cosh for nearly 28 minutes, score with just two seconds left on the clock. 40% possession, two shots, three circle entries, but it's the one that matters that's on their side. Argentina nil, South Africa won the half-time score. Let's get a reaction now from Jade May, the goal scorer. Absolutely, what a fantastic goal to finish with two seconds on the clock. He sustained a lot of defence. Talk to me about it. Yeah, I think our momentum has been building. That was the main um, objective from the game. Defence strong, and as soon as we get an opportunity to go forward and make sure we make a count today, because today is all about us.
and you've been defending like Trojans back there and then to get the breakaway, is it going to be more of the same for the second half? Uh, certainly, I think defend to attack to go forward and as soon as we've got our, our platform strong in the back then we'll make sure we put the goals in our front. Thank you so much. Thank you. So both teams out on the park with 45 seconds to go before the, the restart. But certainly Argentina have an awful lot of work to do. They created opportunities as we saw in those highlights, but just haven't been able to convert. Right, let's get down to Krista. Who have you got, Krista? I've got Sheldon here, a fantastic goal to secure a 1-0 advantage against a very dominant Argentina side. You must be so proud. Yeah, I think uh, the plans are coming together. It's going to be just important now to see how we deal with what uh, we know they're going to bring in the second half. So important now for us just to try and build on that. And just talking about your goalkeeper, Van, has been brilliant in the first half. She's kept you in it. Is it going to be much the same? Yeah, I think definitely. And I think the team has done well. It's going to generate the saves that we wanted. So quite happy at the moment with our defensive efforts. Best of luck for the second half. Thank you. So South Africa get us underway. Lazeby can't keep the restart in play. Beef around the back through Donati. To uh, in the way though. And uh, Simon. Argentina with it all to do in this second half. Well, they certainly have to create things themselves. It looks like they're sitting back and, and waiting for something to happen. It's very individual when anything does happen. Breaks kindly for Argentina. And space here, perhaps for Fernandez. Ball in. Granato. Swing and a miss. They've got to be careful here. They're going to go for the referral. Yeah. Four. Oh, good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, going upstairs. Is this a rush of blood to the um, head, Argentina Simon? Argentina are asking for a foot in the oh, circle here, foot please. foot in the circle. I didn't oh, yeah. see an initial foot. It's after okay. Mbande goes to ground. The ball just okay. ends up in a, a pocket of players. Sure. Mbande's gone out and got everything she possibly can on top to try and deny the opportunity. It's somewhere in that mix. Well, there's no South there's, there's no nothing South African here. There's player. no South African player in the middle of it. So it's a lovely underarm ball that clips it in. There's nothing there at all. It then goes in front of Mbande, who dives headlong just to try and deny as much as possible. And it's after this ball drops, does a defender overrun it? At the moment, this is going to be no advice possible because everything's outside the vision. Well, let's have a look here. Now, this is the one. So it's a swing and a miss from the attacker, which is what... Yeah, Yeah. there we go. Absolute foot in the middle of the circle. Alison Kyo didn't see it in the melee. Granato could have been penalised for the swing and a miss, but it's not considered to be dangerous. Nobody flinches away from it. Alison, yeah. I have a decision for you. It did hit a South Africa foot in the circle, so therefore it is a corner. So a good referral. Argentina keeps their referral. Okay, thank you. 
from Argentina. So I've got already padded up, ready to go. So Donati. Barry in the way, though. Goes to Donati. Donati with a the slap. There's the deflection. And uh, Caviero couldn't get hold of it. This is a guilt edge chance. It's out, it's stopped clean. They've opened up those left hand side angles. She tries to play at it at the last minute and opens her wrists. All she needed to do was let that hit her stick and deflect off an angle. Free hit for South Africa. And still a long way to go, but in an earlier game, Malcluo talked about when it's not your day, you know it's not your day, and chances like that, if they keep going begging, then Argentina will just get a fraction more twitchy. You just wonder, don't you? If they don't go in. Picked by Habif. She can't find the pass. I don't think we're anywhere near that position yet. Argentina will manufacture a whole load more opportunities, but they need a little bit more consistency. Caballero being tracked by Bobs. Caballero still going. Caballero into the circle, and Bande just watches it out. Long corner. Habib takes into the circle. Another long corner. Oh, I thought it came off the... A long corner, an apology from the umpire and some key out, another long corner. Under Hader. Both is putting more and more tackles in. Early, she's had a fantastic tournament. She's at the heart of all of the defensive movement for South Africa. Christina Habib plays it down to Ronda Hader. Across it goes. Donati spins. Ronda Hader. 16. Christina Habib. To the foot. Was that on the edge or was that a stick? Just caught the stick. 16. Yeah. So, Sideline ball. Some Keogh suggesting that Erin Hunter is holding in the circle was the signal that she made, just holding, pulling shirts. Agenda said to give her a warning. Marley unable to bring it under control. Barry in the way, though. Into her beef. Her beef, not for the first time. Her first touch isn't the best. But she wins the free hit. Just feel in midfield for Argentina, they do well if they just went back to basics a bit. It feels like that when they get the ball, they're trying to eliminate rather than just passing it simply. Athena Marino, she's gone on a wobble and misses out to Peyton. Just everyone's trying to unlock the key or find the key to unlock the defense, aren't they? Rather than as a team. Yeah, it, just, individually. it just means that it just feels like they're dwelling on the ball and they've got so much pace and skill through midfield. They can just get it and shift it a couple of passes side to side, give the ball carrier support of each shoulder three or four meters away, and they will unlock the South African defense. Hunter and Granato. Granato has robbed Hunter. Good work. It is Howes who Granato robbed. She's on a long corner. Valencia Habib. Donati from the Hader. And the Hader slapping it at the near post. And behind by Dietlis. Dietlis could have done with a call from a goalkeeper to let her know that she could have let that go. Had to play across it, the fear that there was a player behind her. Shot comes in. No joy. It's a lovely pass, and then chopping underneath to get the elevation, and Bande covering that near top corner. Thought for a minute, her lack of height might have been her undoing, because that was not far away. Habib drops it out. 
ball from Von der Heide. Here is Sanchez. On the header, Habib. On the header, South Africa sitting so deep. Furthest forward is Hammond's, he's on the 23. A little bit more patience from uh, Argentina, passing it back across, across the back four. Then what is it, they're football parking the bus. <laughs> I mean, they are... The South Africans are going so, so deep, and we're used to seeing teams play full press, half court press, protecting their own half, but... It's being robbed high up the park. Now, an opportunity here for Trincinetti. Trincinetti. It's a long corner. It's a long time to sit back when we've got 23 minutes remaining in the contest. Well, I, I just try, if they want to sit this deep, I just vary it slightly and make sure that the South Africans have at least one player committed to putting some pressure to the ball. If you just allow that lateral transfer, your whole defence, it's physically exhausting to shuttle and shuttle and shuttle again. The work from Manuel. And good work from Bobs, who's lost her stick. Here is Damons. I tell you what, Manuel's in front of the ball, she's in front of everybody. And a chance here for Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Argentina at sixes and sevens, and how South Africa haven't got that? Surely that came off an Argentinian foot. That looked nailed on as Dirkie Chamberlain cut that in field. It was a lovely little reverse push pass from Damons to get it into the midfield to start with, with Manuel ahead. They're certainly committing some players forward when they do get those opportunities, but Argentina just look like they've got absolutely no shape at all. Cincinnati. Ortiz. Habib. On the Hader. What can Argentina do here as Gomez finds Barry in a waiver? Into uh, Kunas. Goes down under the challenge. And it goes again. It's all first time ball into the circuit rather than being patient and working the angles. But just it looks like you talk about teams when they are really struggling to break opponents down. What's the plan B? How are you going to change your structure? Now, don't get me wrong, there's 10. Green shirts packing the defence and therefore you can't expect to get into the circle on a first phase attack. There has to be an elim elimination to create an extra number. Yeah, by the way, though, gets a green card. And it goes from bad to worse. South Africa now actually having a go at this for the full court press. They know they've got an extra player. And this this is a great opportunity for them with the ball. Sorry, without the ball to step high, get a little bit of pressure off their own back line. Oh, okay. Being turned over now, Marino. She's got Granata under her left shoulder. She can find it. Marino wins the free hit. Ortiz takes out to that Argentinian left hand side. And they find the ball across, twisting, turning just outside. And the penalty corner given by the uh, other umpire. Penalty corner number five. Oh, twisting and turning, Sanchez goes left and then just pulls back underneath. There's no issue in there, it's the foot in the circle, absolutely nailed on. That's uh, in the first instance. I think it's outside, Yamada supporting. Argentina, two goals in nine coming into this one, none from four so far. The penalty corner number five. Brian Oevo still out of play yet. Yep. So 
the top of the circle goes. Right hand side. It looks all a bit. Uh, yeah, didn't really work at all. Donati didn't like. Didn't look like anybody knew all they were doing. It's a relatively slow injection. It doesn't get to the top particularly quickly, and then she pauses and checks. A deflection from that height, you're never going to score with a player that's 10 yards off the line with a static goalkeeper reading the movement. Well, 10 yards? A lot further than that, wasn't it? Anyway, it was a long way out. Free hit taken quickly. Argentina trying to get something going. That's a better speed of ball. Marino, but she can't get around Howes, who does really well. That's a superb take from Howes on the run. Moving one way, pulls a stick across the body to take the ball away from Marino. Argentina now, they just need to transfer, find the width, get it out to their right forward. It's just a pack South African defence, that angle of pass. I just think it's, it's, it's just not going to work because South Africa is shuttling two banks of three at the front of their defence. Really effective. Caballero is coming on. Donati. Argentina. Coming into the circle. On the reverse, I think it's Granato. The deflection's gone over from Ortiz. Better. But again, it's narrow angle, South Africa really giving scratch, but <laughs> what a miss. When it's your day, it's your day, South Africa. If they could get one, maybe, Argentina, it might just all settle down, you feel. Oh, completely, because South Africa then would essentially be forced to come out again. It would open up some spaces, but all the time that they've got this slender lead, we spoke before about game management and fair play to them. They're playing to their strengths. Fernandez wins the free hits off Jones. Fernandez still going. And it comes. Granato trying to make it work. Goes against her. Oh, possession stat still heavily in favour of Argentina, but Las Leonas have not found their natural rhythm. And more worryingly, it could be two consecutive defeats. There is a beef. And well. A beef. Gomez. Yes, it goes. Alonso. Chamberlain, good running line just to eliminate that square pass. Oh, miss touch. Doesn't come to anything. Habib onto the foot of uh, Bobs. Alonso. Gomez. Habib. Habib, though, running it. Rather than passing it. And the beef just running into trouble when the ball was out to the left hand side to Barrio Nuevo. Caviello. What can she do? Long corner. Well, that's better choice from Caballero because when Habif was running, she's running at two static defenders who are balanced and able to close down a channel. If you're going to run and eliminate, you want your opponent to be moving towards you in some, some way because it creates spaces to accelerate into. Manuel is not going to give that up. Oh, yeah, she is now. Very much Fantasia. Mustering it back. Oh, in the way, though. Work something, make something happen down that right hand side, but we are 10 seconds away from three quarter time. And Argentina, for all their huff and puff, just nowhere near 
breaking down and Bande's goal. They're going to run out of time here. There is the final hooter with Marino on the front foot. But South Africa have negotiated another 15 minutes and are just 15 minutes away from what would be an incredible upset here in London. Argentina, the supporters still have the belief. The question is, does Caradini and his team, because with 15 minutes left to play, the world number threes, in a bit of a sticky situation. Argentina nil, South Africa won. So, Caradini having a chat, but essentially, it's not going to make a huge deal of difference. I mean, of course, they'll want to win, but even with this, they are still second in the table. Here's the uh, penalty corners. Well, that was a chance that went begging, opened up all of the angles, was absolutely there, but playing across the ball, Cavallero gets the height on it and not the change of direction that was needed. Yes, balls into the circle, and so having a forcing Argentina out onto narrow angles, played beautifully across the goal with a really strong right hand, but that touch over the crossbar from Ortiz, disappointing for Argentina, obviously, but South Africa will be absolutely delighted with the discipline of their South African defence. OK, let's get on to the pitch. Krista, who have you got? I got Augustin, the Argentinian coach. A scoreline we wouldn't expect with a quarter to go. How are you going to break down this South African defence? We have to be more aggressive in the D. Uh, we have so many penetrations, so many actions, and we are not so accurate. We have to change our mind and our aggressivity to score. And do you think you're going a bit individual at the moment? Does it need to be more of a team thing to break in? Yeah, sure, sometimes. Thank you so much. So, here we go then. Caballero almost uh, stealing possession. Well, they've won the free hit here. That's having the urgency, but not being too urgent and not worrying about the scoreline because, as I say, it doesn't actually make that much difference. They'll still finish second, even if they lose this 1-1-0. One, one but it's all about the momentum as they win the penalty corner. Penalty corner number six. Yeah, just momentum and habit. They just need to get slightly better energy, more in energy to finish this game off to carry forwards. So, there's a cast at the top of the circle. And it's going to be Gomez to the right, number 29. And, uh, Fabio Nuevo, number 27. Marino with the injection. Mario Nuevo will look for the deflection. And again, off Granato, who's only about four paces inside the circle. Surely he's got to be another four further forward. Barrio Nuevo doesn't catch hold of it in the first instance, but this is just a pointless tip-in. So I think they're reading it every single time. They're allowing Mbani, the goalkeeper, to take the straight shot off the top. Barrio Nuevo not taking that on and going for a tip-in. That's straight line and a ridiculous distance from the goal. It makes no sense. Granato gets a stick on it, her beef into Caballero. Caballero driving at the circle. Here's Granato, one all. Maria Granato with a wonderful finish. But it all came from the drive from Caballero. They're back on level terms with 13.51 remaining. Maria Granato, the FIH Young Player of the Year, levels it up. Well, it's the pass out the back that isn't great. Granada gets the touch in the first instance, then cuts across, really clever cut across the defender to create the space. It's not the cleanest of strikes, but she gets enough on it. It's a top edge over and past Amande. Amande could possibly have been slightly more aggressive and charges down. She sets herself and doesn't accelerate. Makes herself as big as she can. But it's a good touch from Granato after setting it up all herself. So a sense of relief, perhaps, for Las Leonas. They are level. The very start of this final quarter. Young 
corner. It's uh, Maria Granate's first goal of this World Cup. Howes. Marley. Oh, she's got one right on the knee there. There's Marley. Much sympathy from the umpires. I mean, expect there might at least be a question, Charlie. She's hobbling around in front of both of them. Marina has a look around her. She's got Cavallano to the right. Marina though, takes it on herself because Cavallano's drawn the first one. Here is Cavallano. Far post, good save. Good work from Marino. Looked for the pass, kept it, gave it the second time, which gave Cavallano the option, but she maybe had perhaps took too long. Cavier had all the time that she wanted. I do not understand why strikers on that angle go for a slap shot at goal. It takes so long. The backswing takes ages. I appreciate we saw the Dutch score above the goalkeeper from that angle, but surely here you hit it. Look at the delay there. That just takes far too long. The goalkeeper can set. It's readable. Surely you just go old school here. And it comes. Looking for Granato. Good work from Glazeby. Wins the free hit. Well, South Africa have had three circle entries. Argentina 30. Two shots, one goal. 18 shots, one goal. Oh, no. tackle you know from her beef. Caught. She's got Granato in front, but Granato, her beef and Marino. Granato, though, is lost out. Penalty corner. Oh, no, really? Been penalised for deliberately breaking down obstruction. There's nothing there. She's got. She's trying to change a stick from one hand to the other. I don't think that's deliberate in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Ayana, South Africa are saying that that player there was clean. Could you check, please? So she's saying she got the ball cleanly. It looks odd because she changes her stick handle. She goes round the back of her body. There's two players contesting. She gets the ball in the end, absolutely. She's not even looking at Renato when she changes hands. So in terms of a deliberate foul inside the 25, I don't think you can ever accuse her of that. She's just trying to play a ball that's going to her right foot. That's incredibly harsh if it's given. But she catches Granato's stick. Like you said, I don't think it's intentional. So to give a corner outside the D, it has to be considered as an intentional foul, and I just don't see how you can read that as such. If you look at where she's looking, you look at how she's running, there's the jab, goes round the back, she's not looking, that's accidental stick contact. You can understand the foul, but not a deliberate one in a corner. OK. Alison, there is no clear reason to change your decision. Penalty well, Africa, we've seen this before. Okay, it, thank it, you. It's a matter of interpretation from the um, from the on-field umpire. The video umpire can't overturn that, can she? Well, obviously not if that's how it's been blown, but I'm still going to disagree with the decision. Direct flick. It's in Bande's feet. She gets it out. Seven penalty corners now. Marino, Marino just going to get hustled out of it. There's just too many green shirts there. No danger there. Glazeby on the reverse stick gets it clear. Gomez. There's a Mexican wave going around the stadium right now. Forward from Vonda Heide. Cincinnati out wide to Fernandez. Fernandez up to Albertario. Albertario tries to play it back to Fernandez, but it's well read by Dietlis, who thought that was going out. Brilliant play from Albertario. Dietlis. 
just caught by Alvatario. And the Hader into the corner to Ortiz. He's got plenty of space, gets her head up, up to the circle edge. Cut underneath, but so many green shirts in it comes. Trincinetti still going, Trincinetti, but good defensive effort once again. And now the keeper has just got to do some running repairs on the kit. Our straps just popped. Because he can't hear you. Toe. He threads it. Oh, okay. There's a kicker that the toe strap's off as well. She needs to have a look at that quickly. Well, that's going to hurt if, that's, if the ball squeezes underneath there. How painful is that, Simon? Very. <laughs> the arms work can absolutely vouch for that. Surprised she can't feel that strap on the top of her shoe. To extend. The toe just pokes out a little Ready? bit. Yeah. Let's go. Well, she's got them both out, look. Both of them. Well, in that case, you might want to argue that's deliberate, but there's a number of goalkeepers I know that don't use the front strap because they want to get their toes up inside the kicker as much as they can, and they feel it sits low enough. But with the strap where it is, that forces your toe down and out of the, out of the kicker, and if the ball goes wide and you stretch, that hits your shoe and it hurts a lot. Habif. First time from Gantz. Poor ball. That probably just sums up Argentina. Great pace from House. She's shown it all game defensively. For once, she gets some offensive space to run into. Duplessis. Poor ball. Picked up by Trincinetti. She's got no one in front of her, so she has to come to Alvatario to her right-hand side. Alvatario or T's on that left-hand side, if they can find her. Through Fernandez on the, into uh, Alonso, and then to Ortiz. Around the corner to Barrio Nuevo. Well, you find people with passes when they move and catch your eye. And there isn't that movement from Argentina at all through the midfield space. Sometimes the players aren't really bothered about whether they get it or not. Habif, no one in that right-hand pocket, so Habif is there. I have to come back. All right. Took the angle ball in. Well, they can obviously continue in this vein, our Argentinas. They might sneak a 2 1 win. Or they might just live to rue the way they've approached this one. Well, to be fair to South Africa, that wall they just threw forward was out of necessity because they had no other options. But it's not something they've done all game. This hasn't been a win it in your own D and then smash it off the other end. They've tried the best they possibly can to handle the ball well, create a few opportunities from a really solid defensive platform. Alvatara using her body to good effect. Up against deep lifts, Alvatara in traffic now. But look at that, four green shirts surrounded by four. And because Argentina aren't then throwing additional players, they're just not counting the numbers particularly well, recognising that South Africa commit players to the ball carry in this space elsewhere. On the Hader, spinning out, lovely ball to Alvatario. Alvatario can't get it out for the shot. She's still trying to find the space. She's gone really narrow now, but does find the foot in the end. A little unfortunate for the defender Duplessis. Good work from Alvatario. So, can Argentina go ahead through an eighth penalty corner yet to convert today? 
Ryan Nuevo, drag flick, good save from the keeper. Ryan Nuevo will get another shot. She really has had a superb game as Umbande. Fumalela Umbande. Uh, stop clean, the drag is long and accurate. She does get this one away properly. It's a good extension save. Pops back in and then falls through the defence, unsighted with the masks. Ryan Nuevo once more. Oh, dear me, it's broken down. And, uh, another penalty corner. Penalty corner number 10. Well, it's a practice session at the moment, and Bandai staying as big as she can, the defence scrambling as best they can. To be fair, it looks like they need the practice. Doesn't it just? Not a great injection barrier in a wave, though. That's why. South Africa that time running a tight number one runner straight at the top. And the Baron Nuevo opening her hands up to try and go wide of Mbande's left post. House on the post watching it wide. Oh, dearie me. Bob's has had an absolute nightmare there. And here comes Albertario. Albertario wins the free hit. Look at the circle penetration, Simon. 35 to 3 is absolutely incredible. 35 circle entries to 22 shots compared to 3 and 2. So this is the defensive line for South Africa as they ran off the top. Double team out on that left hand side. Three players forcing Argentina to go wider than they want to. That's a really poor ball. Um, and Kunas. A beef. Gomez. Paya Nuevo. A beef. Gomez. Ortiz. Again, just running into contact with the Argentinian ball carrier. And bumped off the end of the park by uh, Damons. And why not? As a team worked incredibly hard for 56, 55 minutes. And I think you can give them that at this stage of position. Oh, completely. All they've done so well is they step three players across. They're running these two banks of defenders. And in that instance, the mobility was compromised by the defender close to the ball. And Tayton staked across as the free defender to then tidy up behind. And they're leaving that until the last possible moment. Really good movement and understanding of your defensive shape. Granato is in there to steal it back. How? Well, I was going to say, how about that from Deepness? But it's on the reverse. Stick, good save. Brilliant save and band aid. The top edge of a glove was that as it flashes in. Yep, it absolutely was. There's no referral. They haven't got a referral. was top edge well pulled across the body really sharp movement so, Monday has had an absolutely tremendous game She's just got to keep her defense concentrated for three and a bit more minutes get something for this excellent performance Variation coming. And it's a long corner. Well, I was going to be critical. I thought that was the same deflection move that they'd run before. But South Africans, they're leaving the shot from the top. Really clever. Four player team defence. Are they referring this? They are. Tic tac. So it's danger? Ball goes up in danger. Okay. There you go. 
Argentina are looking for danger in the center of the circle here. I'll take a look at the Hope rather than expectation. That feels a little bit that way. The ball comes in. And it's up for knee. Remember, he's going to perceive to be dangerous. I'm not sure whether Keo can see this. Well, it it comes does up. come up with a South African stick. Yeah, for me, I think this will go for a corner. I have a decision for you. Yeah. The ball was dangerous. Therefore, it is a penalty corner for Argentina, yeah. and they keep their referral. Okay, thank you. Penalty corner number 12. Uh, South Africa knew that as well. They were already behind the goal, putting their kit on. Themselves ready. And again, will Mbande call the same thing to allow so the, the straight shot from the top? Is she confident enough that she can deny that straight flick? Well, they haven't run it too many times, have they? Top of the circle again, straight flick, she makes the save. Another penalty corner, dangerous off the pads. Well, there's a little bit of a left hand, effectively a fist pump inside that big glove. Out to the top, it stops a relatively clean drag, it gets it away, but it's down the middle, and Bande gets the right leg through it. Yes, it's up and dangerous, but doing a job. Nueva once more, good save, then the, off the line by the post player and high fives Chamberlain and uh, Umbande. What a tick, it's another, it's a good clean stop from a bobbly trap, out, open wrists, fired in, stop, absolutely clean. Damon's down the other line, play on. So it's Emi Amada who's been pretty much a spectator down that end. Caballero. To no one in particular. 14, Argentina. A beef. Over here. Is going to sit down and she'll come on with 10 seconds remaining in the match. Okay, Simon, uh, player of the match. Do we, well, can we guess? <laughs> yeah, I think the, the pictures on the screen say it all. You have just faced the world number threes who've had 26 shots at your goal and you've conceded just one. Mbande, the South African goalkeeper, without a shadow of a doubt, is my player of the match. From Alela Mbande, many congratulations to her. Brilliant performance. Now, can her side just hang on or even sneak the win? <laughs> Wouldn't that be incredible? We've only had two shots so far this game. You're at one all. Here comes another wave of Argentinian attack. Lovely pass through to Granato. She gets a little touch in front and Bande's going to come, but she doesn't need to because Erin Hunter is there to get it clear. Here is uh, Shelley Jones who wins the sideline ball. And again, you know you're having a good day because the ball was smashed clear from Hunter at the back and Jones, a bobbling ball, drilled at you. She absolutely middles it and stops it dead to retain possession, South Africa. Oh, deepness. Just about retains possession. Jones. Oh, Sildi. But they're almost there, South Africa. Argentina with plenty of work to do. And they thought they were poor in the second quarter against Germany. They've had plenty of possession, plenty of circle entries, plenty of shots, but they just haven't played like they can, like they played against Spain. Marino cuts inside, nothing there. Spinning away is Peyton. Well, heads held high for South Africa. They've defended outstandingly well. Yes, Argentina haven't really played to their strengths and potential, but wow, what a defensive performance. Countdown is on, and it comes from Habib. Marino touches it wide, it's all over. And they've done it, they've held on. Brilliant performance by Sheldon Rostrin and his team. And in particular, this lady here, Fumalela Mbande has had an absolute blinder.
and no wonder she has a smile etched across her face, getting a congratulations from each and every one of her teammates, and deservedly so. A brilliant performance from South Africa and from the goalkeeper. They took the lead totally against the run of play two seconds before half time when uh, Jade Main uh, scored the goal and they Argentina huffed and puffed and two minutes into the final quarter they got the level up but they couldn't find one to go in front and Sheldon Rostrand and his team have a magnificent point from a thoroughly battling performance in their last game of this Vitality Women's Hockey World Cup. Huge congratulations all round to Mbande. The final score in this final Pool C match. It's a shock. We've had one every day at this tournament. Argentina won, South Africa won. So let's have confirmation then of the final standings in the Pool C pool table. Germany top it. They are straight through to the quarter finals. Argentina will play the third place side in Pool D in the playoffs. Spain will play the second place side in Pool D in the playoffs. And South Africa go home, but go home with their heads held high and a thoroughly brilliant performance. Here is confirmation then of what we've got. Currently, New Zealand are in second place in Pool D and Japan third. But of course, that could all change as we go through the uh, fixtures tonight, which are as follows. Japan against Belgium, six o'clock uh, British summertime, local time here in London. And then New Zealand, Australia, the final matchup on this penultimate day of pool action. OK, let's get down on to the pitch and hear from what I'm hoping is a very happy goalkeeper. Absolutely. I'm here with Mbande, who put in a stellar performance there to manage to just secure the draw. How does it feel? Because there was a barrage of Argentinian attack on you. Um, I think as a team, we came out knowing that we'd have to put in a great performance, especially after our match against Spain. And I think we all just pitched up today and we gave it our 100%. Very exciting. And 13 corners conceded against you, and you managed to keep them out so well to secure the draw. Congratulations to you, but how does it feel, and does it make you as a South African really proud? Of course, I'm flipping excited and very, very proud. But again, we came in knowing we had great tactics. Our coach put in the hard yards, and then we just had to do our bits on the field. Well done. Congratulations again, and enjoy it. Thank you.